Hello and welcome back to the Rum Bluffers Sewing Room. Is there something that you notice strange about my appearance? Yeah, you guessed it. No necktie. A Regency gentleman is defined by the way in which he ties his necktie. A great deal of time and attention was paid to how he looked there because quite frankly, that's what was showing all the time through his a waistcoat and through his coat. When I first began researching this, I found the book of Necklothitania, and my initial reaction was that this was just a joke. Uh, looking at the cartoons, I thought, no, this can't be serious on such a small detail of men's clothing. But then I found another, The Art of Tying the Cravat by Mr. LeBlanc, and you can see that this went into considerable detail. I then began to look at original um, Regency portraits of men and found that the neckties that were being displayed in the portraits uh, were very similar to the diagrams that I'd seen in the books. They could be used to either indicate what they were doing during the course of the day, uh, what their mood might be, or the character that they were wanting to convey. Of course, you've got to bear in mind that all of these uh, portraits were intended to convey uh, a certain message to the people who were looking at them. Necktying was obviously far more serious than uh, I'd originally thought. Um, neckties could be white on many occasions, but also during the course of the day, they could be coloured. And uh, this young man you will see has got a, a coloured silk neckerchief, and then another person has got a, a black necktie. He might have been ex-army. The first question is, what do you make it out of? Well, it could be either silk or cotton, which has been well starched. Um, if you're wanting the really nice, crisp evening appearance, then I would suggest that you make it out of a starched cotton. And if you're going for a rather more relaxed daytime appearance, then perhaps a silk one will be nice. So let's start with something easy. This is the Marat, which consists really of just a straightforward crossing over, and then you tuck the ends underneath the, uh, for example, your waistcoat, and you'll see there's a very simple knot there. The next one's the Napoleon, which is even more simple. You just cross over, but you need to have it nice and wide so it will cover the gap at your shirt. Again, tuck it underneath your waistcoat, beneath your armpits. The barrel knot is where we start getting into more detail. Start with the middle of your necktie at the front, put each end round the back and bring it round to the front again. Then put left over right and make a knot. Then bring the top end down to the left of the knot and through inside itself. Tighten it up and make sure that the barrel is obviously there. The next knot is quite a simple one. Start as usual at the centre, around the back. Left over right, and then through to make your knot. And then, once that's done, tighten it and spread it out. If you've got a thin tie, it's an American. And if it's a very bulky tie, you can spread it out and that makes it a cascade. The next is the Gordian knot, the trickiest but also the neatest. You need a well-starched tie. Start with the knot in the same way as we have with many of them. Make a loop out of the bottom end and then fold down the top smoothly. Then feed the end of the top up through the loop that you've made. Pull the end of the loop until it just disappears, hold the knot in place and then fold one side over the next and flatten the knot out so that the folds can be seen clearly. 
Fix the knot in place with a pin. If you've got a decorative one, that's great. Uh, I've stuck an ordinary pin there just to give you an illustration of what it should end up looking like.